Bright suns, good morning. Hope everybody slept well last night. We are uh, almost through, almost at the midway point of the fourth week of isolation. Some people have been isolated for nearly 20 days now. I guess 20 work days, I should say. I guess, you know, three weeks yeah. is, you know, we're at work, work days, right? Like day, like I'm at day, what? What is a seventeen now? It's pretty far. It's getting it's getting uh it's getting long winded. Joining me is Andrew Fantasia. I'm James Rosile, by the way. This is Andrew Fantasia's with me this morning. What up? Bright suns. I love that. I love that greeting. It's so yeah. fitting. And maybe one day, if it ever happens, we'll be able to get to Disney and hear somebody say it to us. The, I mean, oh. that would probably be the most ideal thing, but uh, I'm not holding my breath for any time soon. I'm going to Disney. I got to say, I don't know how you feel, but I think like if Celebration happens, which now, so for people that don't know, Celebration changed their website now where it says it's still happening, but in the event that it doesn't, uh, they're offer, they will offer either full refunds or you can just move your ticket to the next uh you'll, you'll you'll just save your ticket basically for the next celebration whenever they postpone it till or whatever and i imagine if it's not happening this summer i don't think we're getting one next year regardless and i think we're going to wait the two years that's what i think is going to happen yeah. so uh, okay. yeah just to wait to hype up uh, the big thing the big movie uh, i don't think it has to do with the big movie i think it has to do with they're scheduling. I think the reason why they're doing it now is so that they could do Celebration D23, Celebration D23, like that. Uh, and okay. if they just all of a sudden are like, well, well, I'm Celebration 2021, then it's 2021, and then 2022, and then you have to wait a year. So it just seems like a lot um, for them to do. And that, that But I'm, I could be wrong. I mean, who knows? I Look, let's hope that it doesn't get postponed. But here's a question for you, Andrew. If it, if it goes off and, you know, let's, you know, the world... I don't think the virus is going to be gone by then necessarily. You know, maybe there's a vaccine. Who knows? But would you still go to celebration in August? That's tricky. Um, I think it is. I think it's tricky for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, that's another question I would like, I would like to ask uh, Reed Pop. Anyway, sorry, go on. Yeah. Uh, it's, I feel like it would depend on the cushion of time, you know, between the end of this and the beginning of celebration. Mm -hmm. uh, because if it's like, hooray, it's over. And then eight days later, it's celebration time. I'd be like, uh, well, let's hold off on going to. Canada. I feel like this would have to peak and kind of be on a downhill slope by early June for celebration to happen. I think yes. if this goes into, into July, it just, it, it's too soon. The, Look, my concern is you grab people, you put them in. There's a lot of people at Celebration. And I haven't been to the Anaheim Convention Center, but I've been to Orlando's. I've been to Toronto's. You know, I, have, I wasn't obviously in the Chicago one you were, which is massive. But they're as big as they are. And the Toronto one is massive. You put 75,000 people in, in an area that's a lot of people in an area, you know, like, yeah. And you can't, move, even in the Toronto one, if you go on a Saturday, which yeah. I never do, no, you can't move. Exactly. You cannot move. It just, I don't know. It's uh, I, I want to stay positive. I hope it happens, but if it does happen, it's how safe will a lot of people feel going there. And, you know, yeah. it, it's so it, you know, it, it, we're in a it's a tough spot i don't want to think too heavily on it right now and obviously look we're a star wars podcast there are way more concerning things happening in the world than what we're talking about but because mm -hmm. we talk about star wars we have to that's what we're going to direct that and we're not neither one of us are doctors or first responders or anything like that and we're not scientists i mean i'm a well, bit of a scientist yeah, yeah i play a lot of dr mario um which made the doctors actually when we were in the hospital last year with aaron uh for that we felt like forever <laughs> It. Uh, I played a lot of Dr. Mario that week, and the doctors uh, got a kick out of it because I would give them suggestions. I would say, maybe you use the blue pill. Yeah, then... <laughs> if you throw it here and rotate it, you might be able to, to fix <laughs> yeah, that. That's, I brought that up. Exactly they said it probably doesn't work like that. But, um, what, <laughs> but what do they know in all honesty? That's what I said. I said, you guys yeah. know. I said, not one of you have that thing on your head. So Whatever. Um, but anyway, it was it was a good fun, and they all got to laugh at it. And that's all. I'm not a doctor, uh, but I respect it. I appreciate all the hard work from all of those people. I went to the grocery store uh, yesterday, and 
my goodness. It's just like every time I go now, it's like the world is one step closer to nothingness. It's just insane. But then there's always that one moron who's walking around like they don't realize that things are happening. And mm-hmm. they just go walk right in front of you. There was a woman uh, at the at the grocery store. She just picked up every magazine and started reading it at one of the cash registers. And they had to come up and be like, ma'am, you can't do that. And also, please don't lean on our – like, she was leaning on it to read it. It was like, oh. do you not – like, have you been under a rock? Are you Jared Leto at some meditation thing for the last month coming out of it and not knowing what's happening with the world? It was just uh, crazy. But speaking of crazy – uh, you don't get to stir crazy like some people I know. So how have you been keeping yourself busy during these? Because you are uh, you you teach kids, so obviously that's out the window right now for you. So what have you been yeah. doing uh, to keep yourself busy during these uh, God, this last month? <laughs> I know, right? It's already been that long. Well, we're actually this coming week, this coming Wednesday, we're starting our first attempt at teaching online. Uh, we're gonna try it over Zoom. So the the academy that I work for is trying to see if we can get that done. I don't know how successful it'll be, but that'll be happening. And then uh, on top of that, I've just been spending my time um, binge watching things. You know, I've been getting into the DC TV series because it's pretty cool, James. And it's like the which, MCU but with DC and it's on TV. Which series? That's a lot of abbreviations. The, the Arrowverse. Oh, the Arrowverse. Yes, yes. I yeah. was in Vancouver with Aaron. She had a work trip there uh, a few years, 2017, October 2017. And she worked and I just spent all day walking Vancouver, the streets of Vancouver. Great place. If you haven't been to Vancouver, I recommend Vancouver. My sister's living there right now. Fantastic place. But I walked and I would get, I would go to like all these microbreweries and <laughs> just like, I had nothing else to do. So I just walked That's around. That's where they make very tiny beer, right? The tiniest of beers. Mean. Yeah. You okay. you just look at it. You're like, that looks like a tiny beer. They're like, it is. It's it's the movie. Um, What's that movie with Matt Damon where he gets shrunk? Downsizing. It's the that yeah. size. Yeah. But anyway, so I'd walk around and I would, I drank, I went to this one that was really cool. And that's where like the cast of Riverdale apparently goes there all the time. Cause they, I didn't see them when I was there. But one night I was walking and I saw they're setting up something on the street and all, and I was like, that's cool. They're, I guess they're shooting Riverdale. Because, I mean, I knew Riverdale, Arrow, Supergirl. I thought I knew they all shot there. Um, yeah. But all I ever heard people talk about was Riverdale. And I was like, well, it must be Riverdale. Then when I walked by again, the concrete, they made it look like the road was shattered and destroyed. And I was like, well, this is a weird episode of Riverdale. <laughs> but I wouldn't put it against, put it past Riverdale to do it. Anyway, it ended up being Supergirl. And I was like. I'll bet you it's the Christmas episode of Supergirl. And I told Aaron, she goes, Christmas. It's like, it's Halloween. I'm like, they're shooting Christmas. And we went out and they had all these Christmas decorations and everything. Everyone was like, yeah, because it's my favorite time of the year. And uh, anyway, I ended up being this uh, Supergirl uh, Christmas episode from 2017, uh, I guess. And yeah, it was a lot of fun being at a stay and watch. But they were so early on in setting up. But I was like, oh, I want to watch the BFG, the BFL get set up. But I got to see it on. They were right outside of our hotel. So you look out a window, you can kind of see it. But I think they shot oh, wow. at like 2 in the morning. So we didn't watch the scene happen. But when the episode aired, Rob, Darth Ward, gave me a copy of it. And I watched it because I don't know how to watch I don't know how to watch it. And uh, we saw, I was like, that's the scene. And I was like, ah. And then it was like three seconds. But it was cool. Anyway, sorry. That's, uh, that's, my, that's all I've seen of the Arrowverse. To be honest, I can't with wait you. to get to that now. I'm gonna try to take a screenshot. It, I, I'm not. I haven't even started Supergirl yet. I just started the Flash. It, it, it's like the, I guess it's the second season of Supergirl. Maybe the first, I'm not sure what it was. It was, but honestly, I thought it was Riverdale, and I was very excited for that. And then it was Supergirl, which was really cool too. I, I saw extras uh, rehearsing when I. Ooh. So when I went to grab Aaron, the extras were all rehearsing, and then when I when we walked back, they were gone. So she didn't get to see them, but. Uh, I saw them in the show, so it was that was cool. So that's cool. You're, but you, you're you're uh, artistic. You write obviously, and and you do your mm-hmm. YouTube channels, so you don't get stir crazy like a lot of people. Not at all. No, this is just it's normal life for me. Except by now, I probably would have gone out for a burrito at some point, but that hasn't happened. Yeah, it, it is kind of like I. So I, one of the shows I had to drive to today because I live in the woods was it was quite far, so I got to listen to music. And when I go to work, I, I usually listen to to sports radio that's where i heard the jiffy app but this i like and then sometimes when i'm not i'm just I'll, and when there's shows not on that i like i'll just be like i'll tell siri to play a song and so i got to do that today for the first time in like a month 
Oh. It was so I was just like, oh, I loved it. I was like, play this kind of song, and it would play that, and I was like, this is amazing. It's just <laughs> weird though because it was like, it, it, it's, you know, and it's a ghost town everywhere. Like the small town that I live next to is usually not busy, but now it's like super. Except there's still construction happening, which I thought they shut the, that down last weekend, but it's still happening. So uh, yeah, okay. they were supposed to. Yeah. Anyway, shout out to all the everybody that's still working, still going to work. Uh, that mm-hmm. that's watching right now and not watching. Uh, stay safe just we appreciate yeah, stay it safe. Stay safe. Put, put your don't listen to your managers supervisors you are more important than whatever it is you're selling yes just keep that in mind yeah but also if you are selling something it's because we need it mm-hmm. <laughs> like the, it sucks I, it but you know i was saying um somebody has to i know somebody that has to do a really dangerous job right now and we were talking, and I was like, I don't know if I could do it. Training cobras? Okay, training cobras. Uh, yeah. No, somebody has to deal with people with the with COVID nineteen. And I said, you oh, know, wow. I I couldn't. Do, I I don't know if I could do that or not. So I can't really say anything except for the fact that you are in a position, like you've always put yourself in the position for this. Like that's why you work. You know what I mean? Like that. Yeah. Like this is why you, you work. That's not the profession I chose. First of all, I'm not smart enough. Secondly, I'm, I'm afraid of blood. So like, I'm just, that's just not for me, but those, you know, the, the doctors and nurses, all those people right now that are working, you, you know, that this is, this is your time to really like be the heroes for real. Uh, grocery stores is a little bit different, <laughs> you know, like I don't, when you see a kid behind a register or, or, or an older person behind there, you're just like, I'm thankful for those plexiglasses that they've put up now and, and all that. Exactly. I'm very, very thankful for that because I've, I've seen people go in there. And also I got, before we get into our story, I, there was a woman in front of me. She was, she was uh, elderly. She was older and she couldn't carry anything out and she she was i i don't know exactly what's happening because we're six feet back right she left her groceries there gave her name and address and they're gonna deliver it to her house oh wow yeah i was like well that's i mean normally i would have offered to, to carry it to a car i've done that a few times but i was just like i can't uh I, I just I don't I think I would get arrested if I tried that today. I know, yeah, it's <laughs> you know? weird. It's like what what am I allowed to do? Yeah, this is the the right now the Seinfeld series finale could never work <laughs> in 2020. It could never work. The Good Samaritan law is out the window. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's get into today's topic. On Friday, a few things dropped uh, that you were very excited about. We were supposed to do this yesterday for yesterday morning's show, but uh, things happened, so we didn't have time. So anyway, Andrew, High Republic, let's go. Let's go. Yeah, man, I'm so excited for High Republic. I know it's not coming till the summer, which is closer than I thought because it's April now. But still, we're not getting this book till August, I think. We might be outside so, by the time it hits. Oh, hopefully. Um, even though the summer is the one time I don't go outside because I'm afraid of wasps. That's why I'm not going anywhere near your house this time of year. <laughs> um, but uh, I've, I've been looking forward to these books since they got announced. And I've just been, I, I'm so curious to see what kind of stories they're going to tell us. And the other day, I think it was on Friday. Um, but it doesn't yeah, it really was matter. Friday the point it was is right this- before our live stream. Score then I was right. And, we, did, and we decided we decided not. To, well, I decided not to talk about it Friday to save it for Monday, and then we t- <laughs> we didn't do it. Yeah, I, I was like, let's talk about this, and you were like, no, just like, to spite me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, we're we're gonna talk about Sabalba instead. Yep. <laughs> but uh, they announced um, little. They gave away little character bios, very quick character bios for five of the characters mm. from the high. Republic. And I'm going to really quickly read over those and describe just sort of the, the art that they put up. And um, it's, I just, it just gets me so excited. So I'm going to start from the bottom and work my way up because I feel like they get better and cooler. And that's how Drake does yeah. things too. Woo. I don't know any of his music. So I'm going to start from the bottom now. Yeah. Oh, that's him. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Dude, he's from Tirana. Tirana. <laughs> He's from the 6IX. Right? For anybody that doesn't know, if you say Toronto, Toronto, you know you're not from Toronto. Toronto. You gotta say yeah. Toronto. Where are you going, Toronto? Actually, There's, no this, uh, There's no T in Toronto. I read this joke about like um, the most effective methods of birth control. 
and the one that was like 100% effective, referring to Toronto as the six. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So starting from the bottom, now we're here. Uh, we got this this uh, character. Her name is Vernestra Vern. I guess that's going to be her nickname. Rowo. <laughs> I, really, I really hope that's how you'd say it. Vern Rowo. And she's a teenager. She's green. She's got a blue lightsaber, which is cool because that means she's uh, she's thinking outside the box. Usually green characters, they just go with a green lightsaber just because. But nah, she's thinking different. Go, good on you, Vern Rowo. And it says Vern is a newly minted Jedi Knight. Vernestra Miralian, I don't even know, I think that's an error, but I'm just going to read what they say here, was Padawan to Stellan Gaios. She works hard and is devoted to the Jedi Order, more so than most others her age. At 16, she can't even drink yet. She is one of the youngest knights in a generation. She struggles to fit in with the adults while also get, setting a good example for the younger Jedi. So she's uh, from, now from the YA novel. Yeah, I think uh, if I remember right, you see her on the cover mm-hmm. actually. Uh, right. So she's she's up front there. She looks really cool, Vernestra yeah. Rowo. Then moving up, we got Stellan Gaios and James. Let me tell you, if there's ever been a, a black series waiting to happen, Stellan Gaios, man, he's got a cape going on, a big white cape. He's got the white and gold thing. He's got a blue cross guard saber, but his cross guard is not part of his lightsaber. It's just metal like Aragorn's sword. Damn, it looks cool. And here's what it says about Stellan Gaios. Stellan is an optimistic and well-respected Jedi master. Stellan came up through the order with Avar Chris. more on her later. And although they are often on different assignments for the Jedi or the Republic, when the two work together, they are a powerhouse team of two noble heroes in action. Strong in the force and a natural teacher Stellan is currently stationed at one of the Jedi Temple outposts on the distant planet of Karagon Viner. Jedi Temple outposts. Now that tells us a lot without telling us much. <laughs> These are going to be things. Ooh, see, this is so juicy. Then moving up, we have Keev Trennis. And she looks cool. She's, she looks like she's the, the rogue of the group, right? Because she's got like uh, the dark leather uh, robes like what Anakin kind of wears, so he stands out from the others. Uh, she's got this smirk on her face that just kind of says like, ah, she's she's not you know serious. She's not a stick in the mud. She's got like a sort of Han Solo affectation to her, and she's got a double bladed green lightsaber, which I don't think we've seen in anything yet. So excitement tenfold already. Now Keeve is a young firebrand Jedi believed to have a great future ahead of her, if only she would believe it herself. Quick-witted and more impulsive than she should be. Hey, that's like me. Keeve has only been a Jedi Knight for a few weeks and is a little starstruck around Avar. I would be too, knowing many of the great things Avar Chris has done in the past. She is determined to prove herself to Avar and the other legendary Jedi stationed on Starlight Beacon. But first, she must learn to trust in herself as much as she trusts in the Force. I like that. Um, And I think she's in the Claudia Gray novel. I could be wrong, but I just remember seeing somebody in dark Jedi robes with a green saber on the cover of that. So could be her. Then you got this guy, James. You got a guy named Loden Great Storm. Ooh, he's a Twi'lek. Can't have a Star Wars without Loden. Look at those. There's those wizard sleeves, though. Like, he looks legit, like, straight out of Merlin. This is great. I love this. He's a he's a Twi'lek. He's got a yellow saber. Loden Great Storm is a Twi'lek Jedi master and is considered to be one of the best teachers in the Jedi Order. Strong and wise, with a good sense of humor. Important, ladies. Loden looks at every moment as a learning experience, always trying to better himself and those around him, especially his Padawans. He's already my favorite. Um, but it's a toss up. It's it, it's close because runner up is last but not least. Avar Chris, who looks like she's going to Damn. be our hero of, if not just Light of the Jedi, but also I'm assuming the main character of High Republic in general. I could be wrong. Uh, she's rocking. I wonder, I wonder how they're going to do that. If there is going to be like a main character for all of them, or is she like the main Jedi and she's referred to, and she's the one that kind of just you know, select, she's like you go there and you go there. Uh, I wonder how they're going to play that out. I'm curious. I'm, I'm very much excited for, to hear what you think of these books because I, I do not read. <laughs> oh, 
Well, it's like we talked about once before. Uh, if is there an ending plan for this? Yeah. Because if so, then yeah, then you would need to figure out who your main character is if you have an ending plan. If not, it could go in other directions. But for now, it looks like Avar Chris is our our big contender. Her lightsaber is cool. It looks like just a plain green lightsaber off the top. But if you look at the hilt of it, that's a big hilt, James. That looks like a double bladed hilt, but she's just using one end of it. I don't know. It's big. It's a big lightsaber. She's got like a yellow scarf going on and the cape. Oh, I want toys of all of these people. <laughs> Avar is the brightest, most noble example of Jedihood. She always tries to see the good in people and situations and never puts herself first. She is invigorated about life on the frontier and the challenges it brings and is an inspiration for those who work with her. She is compassionate, not dogmatic, and always ready to sacrifice herself over others. So, Avar or Chris is the best of the best. So she's Qui-Gon? It's Qui-Gon Jinn. Wow. These, the, the, the art on this is just like, I want an art of book like right now for all of this. Well, you won't. You probably won't get one. Although, you know, yeah. the the one thing I'm really excited about is it's weird that this is a book, but they had like the best of the best at Lucasfilm, not writing this, but working on the art of the character designs and all that. It's the like the top notch designers that you could get mm -hmm. for novels and comics, sure, but for novels and stuff, it's it's like there's there's so much you can't not. Is that a double negative? You can't not. It is, just, but it depends where you're going with it. You can't not appreciate <laughs> the 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 love and attention to detail and respect that High Republic is getting. Whether or not the stories are good and you like them all, you know, it's. I think it's irrelevant. I think the, the, the love and the passion that's gone into this project, I think it really speaks for itself. And again, I don't think everybody's going to like every one of these stories that's being told. I think you know, you, you might get the YA book. You might not care for the YA book. You might read the the uh, adult novel. You might not care for that. The comics might be what you want. Maybe you don't like the. I don't think everybody's gonna like every single piece of this, uh, but just the love and the, the the care and the passion that's gone into it is is fascinating to me. Yeah, and like for me at least, there's so many books. Whether you're talking about legends or new canon, there are so many books that just fall short. Uh, and I think it's because they are, you know, they're attached to this grander story. Which they don't have a plan we, for. Which they don't have a plan for. Now along comes this story that's not attached with hopefully a plan. I feel like that just, even though these are more books, more comics, et cetera, I feel like it's a whole new ball game now. And it's not going to feel the same as picking up a new Don and being like, I don't care about Skelly. We're not going to feel that way here. Um, and I, I believe because of how visual everything is in the wars, right? We need this. We need what they're doing uh, because they're taking us to a new frontier, James. They're taking us to new times, new places. Yeah. It's going to have a look to it. That's the, Look how different the prequels look compared to the originals. Mm -hmm. And that's just a 20-year, 25-year difference. This is 400-year difference. So the look is going to be a whole different design. They're almost starting from scratch. They need to take us into that world, not just with a normal, here's a book, here's a comic, but they kind of need to hype us into it the way they hype us into the movies. And that's going to make it all the richer. I hope if this works, that they'll start to design their movies in this fashion. Mm -hmm. Instead of just, oh, we're making a Star Wars movie. Be like, well, why? Are you? This, this is the one thing that gets me is, I don't care if you make a Star Wars movie. I'm going to watch it. There's a really good chance I'm going to like it. But why are you making a Star Wars movie? Why? Why? Mm -hmm. And I think that was the one thing that that the sequel trilogy really missed on, with the four, starting with Force Awakens was why are you making this movie? And money can't be the I mean money's the answer, but right. it can't be the answer. So why? 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 What's the purpose? And um, you know I think I I don't know if they ever really came to that conclusion at all when they made all three of those movies. There's I don't think there's a why in any of them to be honest. Uh, so I hope that there's a why. I, that's that's my thing is why. Just give me the why. You know, I, why, why, why? How do that's, you say why in Italian again? Is it why? Why? That's <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say it's it's not uh, porque or something yeah, like that. Yeah. Well, that's more yeah. Spanish, but yeah. 
Uh, okay, I was gonna say there should be a character named Book K. There He's should be a... why the story is happening. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, just if if you have the why, then the ending is easier to get to because you have the why, mm-hmm. right? So, you know, maybe if when you start off right away, if you don't have an ending, that's fine. But have the but just what's the purpose of telling the story? Why? Why? Exactly. Tell me uh, the your point to it and. and I mean, I'm going to, I like I already said, you already have my money for whatever's coming next. Uh, so I hope, I hope that's what they do with this. And I really, look, I love the aesthetics of the prequels and I'm really hoping that they find a way to incorporate that into these books, but I know that they wanted to have it that old lived in feel. Mm-hmm. So I'm hoping though that through the course of, of this, we might not get there because it might not be that many books being told here, but if the course of this, we see the galaxy becoming this clean, pristine environment that we get in the prequel era. So I hope, you know, if they do start dirty, it gets to that clean point eventually because I love that. And it's, it is a part of star Wars now. Yeah. And let's face it, those clean ships and clean planets looked pretty beautiful. The queen's ship is one of the coolest star Wars ships ever. I love it. I have the little tiny die cast that big that I got at Walmart many, many moons ago. All right. Anything else you want to say? I was just going to ask if uh, that little diecast thing comes with uh, a notification that says there's not enough power to get us to course up. It does not, but it has a little a little flap and there's a little like R2 head that pops out. Uh, but it's like so small that it's basically just a white blob with a blue dot. Uh, but it is it's pretty good. Cool. It's one of my favorite ships for sure. I have three Millennium Falcons like that. From the, These are from the night, like one of those from the 90s. Like it's like predates everything. Before wow. the prequels came out. Yeah, and then there's the... I lost the stand for that one, but I have that ship. And it's small. Like, it's, like, Hot Wheels size. But I don't know if this one was made by Hot Wheels. Hot Wheels makes them now, but I don't think back then it was. And then the Queen ship I got from Phantom Menace because I love that ship. And I was disappointed. It never, it never had a return. And she had, like, a different one, Attack of the Clones and stuff. I was kind of disappointed. Yeah. That. Yeah, it was always slightly different. Yeah, I like the, the... The Phantom Menace one is my favorite. That's mine, too. And the Revenge of the Sith is, like... It's like the Phantom Menace one went on like a 20 day cleanse and shed some poundage <laughs> or something. <laughs> it's like, anyway, I'm really excited for, uh, for high Republic. Thanks for sharing those details. This was actually the first time I heard any of this. I made sure not to listen until you brought it up so I can hear it. And I'm actually very, very excited. I was looking up a few things on my phone while you were saying it. Uh, definitely excited. We did do the contest where automated joy won the first book that's coming out. We'll do contests for more and more because it's going to be a lot of fun. We can't wait. Uh, but anyway, this is going to be a bright suns for Tuesday, whatever the heck day it is of whatever month it is during isolation. Yeah. We are glad we are thankful that you joined with us here today. We'll be back at 12 PM Eastern for our lunchtime show. Uh, I don't know what we're talking about there, but we'll have something planned by the time we get on the air. My computer might not make it, yeah you don't even know you don't even know i've never seen that blue screen before that That freaked me out (laughs) that we were having a good show but internet was perfect everything was showing perfect but youtube was frozen and then my computer just went blue and uh it scared me i it seems to be working now we're doing this so we'll see but anyway this has been bright suns i'm james he's andrew and until next time may the force of others be with you avar chris y'all Wash your hands. Hey scumbags, thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up on our video. As always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Rebel Scum Podcast, for all the latest videos.